Hi there, Terry Hashimoto with BodyTrack. And again, thank you very much for your purchase. Now I'm sure you're wondering, what do you do with all this data? So very luckily for the past two and a half years, what we've been doing is collecting thousands of traces. And we've worked very, very hard, in particular with Jim McLean down at Trump National Doral. And we've collected what we consider to be the seven common traces in golf. We call it the seven traces of body track. Come on and let's take a look. Okay, so we're going to start with what we call the scattered trace. And remember, we collect data moving in two directions. Front to back, which is your heel-toe direction, and then the white line in the velocity chart is your lateral direction, side to side. So I'd like you to consider what you're seeing here as just congestion. So restriction in some way. So when the weight's moving in, in from side to side, it's also moving from toe to heel. So we're going to grab that scrimmer bar, and you can see the weight moving all over the place here. We call this a scatter trace. So the, in this particular case, the weight's moving from heel to toe, side to side, up and down, and all around. Is that something we particularly want to achieve? Not likely. And in this case, the uh, power threshold can be all over the place. And we really uh, want to avoid this trace as much as possible. But this is called the scatter trace, and you will see it from time to time. And one of the things you can take from this is you can also begin to consider how to use footwear, for example. Do you want to use a pair of shoes that's got strong stabilizing bars and or big arches as to polarize your weight distribution throughout the golfer swing? So this is called the scattered trace. This next trace we're going to take a look at is called your abbreviated trace. And I'm just going to kind of run it right through with you once so you can take a look at it. And effectively what this is is that the weight moves very nicely to the trail side and then straight forward directly to the midfoot of the lead foot. This is a, uh, a very good trace in terms of it's a knockdown shot. It can be a short iron. It can be a mid iron. It can also be a very efficient drive if you want to keep it low under the wind. But this is a, an abbreviated trace. Uh, you, not too much weight gets to the trail side uh, and it goes directly towards the lead foot. Again, for the uh, short irons, mid irons, and effective for knockdown shots. And under pressure, this can be a very good shot uh, if you need to use it for, say, uh, keeping the ball low under the wind. One of the traces you're going to see a lot of, it's called a, we call this the fish hook, and this is of a junior golfer, and it kind of goes to the heel and then above the, towards the toe and all around, and it's got a bit of a head to it, like a fish hook. And you'll see this quite a bit. This is a fairly efficient trace. It's, uh, it's useful for a driver, for mid iron, long iron, short iron, and it's probably one of the best all round traces. Uh, but it's not optimal for, say, a long-distance driver. But it is a good trace to, to, to take a look at, and it's one to note. And you'll see a fairly good, strong representation of the weight moving from the heel to the midfoot to the toe, and then driving hard to the uh, toe and the midfoot of, of the lead foot right thereafter, as it is in this particular case. This is the fish hook trace, the heel-toe trace. And you're going to see this a lot with a lot of younger, powerful golfers. And the trace basically goes directly to the... Uh, heel of the trail foot and then it goes directly to the toe of the lead foot. And I'm going to let it just play through here and you're going to see this. And to hit this ball accurately or straight, the golfer has to compensate with the hands because the weight's moving directly to the lead toe. But you'll see this quite a bit. And this is not an uncommon trace. Usually it's correlated to a high degree of power. And again, this is a, you will have to compensate some point during your swing to get that club play square with this trace. Okay, this is what we call the power trace, and this is beginning to uh, understand the differences in the traces that are required for optimal performance in your driver than that will be required with your iron. In this trace, what you're going to see is that good bella balance and stability towards the trail side, weight driving hard towards the lead foot, and note in the transition that white dots moving forward well towards the lead foot well before the uh, back swing is finished, is completed. So already this golfer's got the weight on their lead foot. Now what's going to happen is, is the weight's going to then, a white dot is going to go back towards the trail foot. This is effectively their left side lifting up. And now it's going to continue to go backwards before you make contact. Now the white dot's going to move forward. And by definition, for us to be a, consider this a power trace, that white dot must be moving forward towards impact. And again, remember we measure impact uh, zero on the velocity chart. We measure impact by sound. So this is the beginning of the power trace where the golfer uses their lead foot as a brake, basically effectively straightening out on their left side or their lead foot or their lead side, right side if you're a left-handed golfer. 
and their body slows down on their lead side and it allows the rest of the body to speed up. This is the power trace. So the power Z trace is a little different than the power trace in that the golfer loads up on the front foot and this is Brian Smock in the desert at the PGA show last fall and you're going to see Brian load up entirely on his lead foot then pull directly back and you can see this he's loaded up entirely on his lead foot he's going to pull directly back and then to make this a power trace and you can see in the velocity chart right there this is impact zero he's going to be moving forward just prior to impact and it forms like a Z pattern here so we call this the power Z trace this is a really high power load trace very difficult to replicate but you will see it on long drivers now and then so thanks again for purchasing your body track we really appreciate it and thanks for taking a look at the seven traces of golf these are the seven most common traces that we're seeing and this is after two and a half years of studying this just intensely as crazy we know there's a lot to learn here we thank Jim McLean Scott Hamilton everybody that's been involved from the get-go it's just been a tremendous opportunity for us to work with you and make golf easier and faster to learn Terry Hashimoto with Body Track. As you can see, we're getting packed ready to go. We'll see you at the show. Thank you.